I don't know why, but for some reason, I can't help but think about my middle school spelling bee, okay? I think it was sixth grade. And in sixth grade, I was competitive, okay? When there was a competition, I was there. And I wanted to be the best. So when they gave us the instructions to study for the spelling bee, you know <laughs> that I was studying. I was studying hour after hour of looking over these words, reading to myself every single letter, lists of hundreds and hundreds of words. Now, I was not the intelligent sixth grader who would spend hours and hours with a coach teaching, you know, the way that words are spelled to understand based on the pronunciation, what language that word originated from, which would give you hints and clues to the spelling of that word. No, I just figured if I memorized as many words as possible, when they got to my word, chances are I would have the word memorized. Because I was going to be the best. The best. But when they called me up, the first word was nacho. Nacho. Easy enough, N-A-C-H-O. I got it! I won the first round. I mean, I passed. I continued on to the next round. In the second round, one of the kids went up to speak, and his name was Kevin. Kevin is brilliant, okay? Kevin is still brilliant. I mean, he's like an engineer at, at one of the major universities here with, with where I live, and pfft, it's a big deal. But I still remember, his word was bagel. And Kevin was probably one of the first to start experiencing the effects of puberty. And I won't forget the way that the entire gym auditorium, because we held these things in the middle school gym. We didn't have an auditorium to utilize. It was the gymnasium. He went up there and he said his word. And everyone, all four grades, burst out in laughter when they heard him go, Bagel! Bagel! His voice cracked. And it was hilarious. But he spelled it right. And so he moved on to the next round. But I got up. It was my turn. They told me the word, and I was nervous. I mean, I was shaking. I was so nervous that I could not stand still. And they gave me my word. The word that I had to spell was bagel. Wait. The word that I had to spell was barefoot. Now in my panic, I was like, oh my gosh, how do I spell this word? How do I spell this word? And then it hit me. It dawned on me. This was easy. This was two words. Two simple four-letter words. Bear and foot. I could do this. So I spelled it. B-E-A-R. Bear. Done. F-O-O-T. Foot. Done. I had the word. I knew that I was right. So I wait for the judges to tell me that I was correct and could move on to the next stage. They told me I was wrong. I was shot. I, I stood there with my, my mouth gaping when they told me that I was, was out. And they denied me. How did I? I spelled bear right. I spelled foot right. Barefoot. I would, uh, how? I was so nervous and so frustrated and confused that I had no idea what I had done wrong. How could I have gone astray? So I returned to my seat, completely unaware of everything I was going on. I don't even remember the rest of the event. I mean, it was done. It was over for me. I was... My world was over. What? How? This... The universe was falling apart. This didn't make any sense. I knew that was how you spelled bear. And I knew that was how you spelled foot. What had I done wrong? I actually had to ask the teacher. I said, excuse me, but please tell me. What other spelling of barefoot is there? B-A-R-E. When something is without clothing, it is bare. It is not a bear, the creature that hibernates in winter in a cave, but the other bear. And then foot. Barefoot. <laughs> I had spent hours, days, weeks, months practicing for this, and I was out in the second round. I was devastated. It was over. Dreams and hopes crushed. I wanted to be the best. I wanted to go to the state finals and then the nation. I was going to be the best speller in middle school. But no, no, because I got nervous. So I guess what I learned that day, that fateful day in front of the entire class is that bees are not the only insect that you will find at spelling competitions. No, you will also find butterflies who reside in your stomach. 
And it was those butterflies that corrupted my intelligence and my ability to focus and think. And that finally made me realize just how many hours I had wasted memorizing words. 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 Today, I'm a great speller, though. I can spell anything. A-N-Y-T-H-I-N-G. Anything. That's all. That's all for today. Get out. Go. Vamos. Get out of here. Why? You just, just go already. <laughs> now, there is a word that some will claim is not a word, but there is a word that I remember learning because it was a ridiculous word. The word was flossy nasi nihilopilification. Now, I don't believe that's an actual word. According to what I recall from memory, the word actually is the definition of a wisp or pool of of wool is is what um you know my my sources told me back then urban dictionary at the time also claimed the definition meant that this word was to explain not caring this was the word you used when you didn't care flossy not in the hill of pillification that doesn't even make sense where does the vacation part come in either way if you want to know how to spell this word i still remember from sixth grade it goes f-l-o-c-c-i-n-a-u-c-i-n-i-h-i-l-i-p-i-l-i-f-i-c-a-t-i-o-n now, if I spelled that wrong, oh well, because that's how I recall it from memory. I don't even know what I just said. I, that, that, I mean, that's memory pulling out of there. Whew. But anyway.